the following morning. And we receive the page that there's a dead fish in the tank. And it turns out to be that beautiful queen angel fish. But it appears as though she's the only casualty because everyone else appears to be doing well. I often feel as I drive to these emergency situations that I should have a blue light with bubbles bubbling out of it on top of the van to express my urgency. As you might expect, I really wasn't prepared for the loss of the fish and this being the first significant loss of fish in the tank, I really don't have an appropriate net for digging out or scooping out any dead fish that would occur at the bottom of the tank. Keep in mind, it's a 66 inch deep tank. As often happens, dead or dying fish always seem to end up in an area that's awkward or inconvenient to reach. But with my makeshift net and long extended pole, I've been able to reach down, grab the fish and extract her from the tank. And it's unfortunate that that queen angel did not make it. I was very surprised because I've had her in quarantine for over the last month. She was the most voracious eater in the tank between her and the Imperator Angel, which I intentionally kept together during quarantine so that the introduction into the tank would go smoothly. And the reality is, the inclusion of these type fishes is always a risk trying to get them to acclimate from the wild to the captive environment. Compounded by the fact that these Caribbean fishes just never seem to do well. But the other three fish, the Imperator Angel, the Blue Line Angel, and the Little Potter's Angel, all seem to be doing well. the Queen Angel neatly removed and apparently the rest of the fish doing fine, we're going to go ahead and clean up the drips that we made on the outside of the tank and move along with the rest of our day. Now for all intents and purposes, this is the completion of the 460 gallon cylinder tank. Over the last few episodes, you've seen how the tank was originally set up, the problems we ran into, the exchange of the tank, the resetting up of the tank, and the addition of all the new fishes into the tank. I'd like to point out that the fishes went in in certain groups. The idea was to minimize any territorial issues. We started off first with 24 yellow-tailed blue damselfish. They were the fish who originally cycled the tank. After that 45-day break-in period, we added 12 royal gramas, waited a couple weeks, then added 18 ocellaris clownfishes, waited a couple more weeks, of which we added the pygmy angelfishes, which were the bicolor, the hybrid lemon peel, 
the flame and flameback angels all at one time. We waited again a couple weeks, added the two large raccoon butterfly fish, again waited a few more weeks and added six of the heniocus butterfly and two of the Red Sea blue cheek butterfly fishes. Once again we waited a short period of time and then added the pair of cowfish, the longhorn cowfish, for fun, waited once again and then added both the clown and the huma huma trigger fishes at the same time. Lastly, we added these large angel fishes. Again, the whole idea was to minimize the territorialism within similar species. By adding those similar species all at the same time, there was no territorial issues. From this point on, my job now becomes to maintain the quality of life within the aquarium and the overall cleanliness of the whole aquarium.